Night City feels different from many other cyberpunk worlds. The most well-known cyberpunk piece of media is arguably Blade Runner, and as people have pointed out, the weather in Cyberpunk 2077 is very different from that of the heavy rain and fog of Blade Runner's Los Angeles. The weather is definitely a contributing factor as to why Night City is unlike other cyberpunk cities. But in this video, I want to focus on something else that sets the world of Cyberpunk 2077 apart from other worlds within the genre. And that's the choose of Brutalist Architecture. But before we get into that, what exactly is Brutalism? Brutalism is defined by the Cambridge Dictionary as a building style in which buildings are large and heavy looking and often made from concrete. The term Brutalism originated in the 1950s. The style is often attributed to the Swiss-French architect Le Corbusier. He developed an architectural style used for residential units which featured many brutalist facets. His housing unit from 1952 is often highlighted as the first building that got the term brutalist attached to it. He described a house as a machine for living in and the buildings he designed embodied that philosophy. Then in England, two architects, Peter and Alison Smithson, coined the term New Brutalism in 1952 when describing a design for an unbuilt project in London. But it was truly codified as a term in 1955 when the architectural critic Rainer Benham defined the term based on the unbuilt project by the Smithsons and the Hunstanton School also designed by them, which was built in 1954. Benham highlighted that both buildings had a basic structure and exhibited their materials. Of the Hunstanton school, Benham said, One can see what Hunstanton is made of and how it works, and there is never another thing to see except the play of spaces. So, to sum up, brutalist structures consist primarily of concrete. They are basic in structure and they use raw materials. Brutalism emerged in the years following World War II partly because of a need to rebuild quickly and cheaply. Concrete was an excellent material for this and massive housing units were the optimal choice for housing a lot of people in an efficient manner. But besides the practical nature of brutalism, philosophical ideas has often been attributed to brutalism. Brutalism signifies for some a trust in a strong socialist state, keeping inequality at bay and upholding living standards for all its citizens. The material of concrete was seen as humble and of the people. But fast forward to the 1970s and brutalism as an architectural style was in decline. In Britain, brutalist structures, which once signified the utopian ideals of socialism, instead started to symbolize the failure of the social welfare state. As brutalism declined, so did the socialist welfare state. It was the dawn of neoliberalism and Thatcherism. Night City is a surprisingly glossy place. Reflective surfaces envelop the streets and neon lights and projections decorate them. Most of the high-rises are built of an unknown material. It's not quite plastic, but it also definitely isn't just concrete, it's more refined. This unknown material makes the buildings look futuristic and high-tech, not exactly mainstables of brutalism. Compared to the police station in Blade Runner 2049, and the differences become immediately obvious. But there are brutalist structures in Night City, and furthermore, there are buildings that may not be 100% brutalist, but do use facets of brutalism. There are, for example, many buildings that have a brutalist structure, but painted concrete surfaces. Some buildings also have brutalist bits stuck to them. Common for these is the lack of round surfaces and the use of concrete as building material. But the paint obscures that classic brutalist look. So what are some of the places that do have a very brutalist look to them? Let's start with the building V lives in. The exterior isn't very brutalist. It has painted surfaces and a semi-complex structure. But the law-given reason for the existence of these so-called mega-buildings is eerily familiar. They were built in the period following the Fourth Corporate War and their purpose was to be an efficient housing solution to thousands of displaced residents. 
while the exterior of these mega buildings isn't super brutalist, it's a whole other story for the interior. Ventilation units are visible, piping is out in the open and snake their way through the corridors. Many surfaces are not treated in any special way and consist of raw grey concrete. There's an oppressing, unpleasant feel to the place and it's one of those places in the game where it can be difficult to spot that the game is set in the future. The Trauma Team Hospital is one of the stronger examples of brutalist buildings in Night City. It has hard edges, it's made of raw concrete and it has a large, imposing, heavy looking structure. Benches in Night City could be described as being brutalist. They have hard edges and they're made of concrete. These are all scattered examples of brutalism in Night City, but there's one place where brutalist structures feature heavily. Pacifica. Pacifica was an area intended to attract tourists, but during the development of Pacifica, investors abruptly withdrew their funding. Pacifica is now a lawless territory with little government involvement. It has an untreated look, with buildings consisting mostly of raw concrete. Buildings are basic in structure with sharp edges, and the sheer amount of them give Pacifica the distinctive brutalist grey concrete look. Pacifica symbolizes how Cyberpunk 2077 uses brutalism. It isn't meant to function as imposing structures inhabited by the main bad guys. The futuristic looking skyscrapers fulfill that role. No, the brutalist structures in Night City signify something else. They signify failure. Where Blade Runner uses brutalism to symbolize the individual being crushed in a society that doesn't care about them, Cyberpunk uses brutalism to signify where the state has failed. Pacifica is a failed area of Night City, which is highly dangerous and lawless. The Trauma Team Hospital signifies the failure of public services, where stuff like healthcare has been massively privatized. And lastly, these apartment mega buildings signifies the skyrocketing inequality. In Blade Runner, both rich and poor inhabit brutalist structures, but that's different in Cyberpunk 2077. In Night City, the rich dwell in their glossy imposing skyscrapers, while the poor languish in raw brutalist structures. Brutalism was at its inception meant to signify a strong socialist state and equality. Society at large, rising from the smoldering embers of the Second World War. But in modern media, it symbolizes something wholly different. And in Cyberpunk 2077, it symbolizes failure.